Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to the series where we are discussing the synthesis of drum and percussion sounds. In the previous video, we took a look at kick drum sounds, and I suggested at the time that that was a great place to start because kicks are very much the foundation of beat-oriented electronic music. So maybe the expected next step would have been to take a look at something like a snare. But here's a potential hot take for you. If I had to choose only two bits of percussion to make electronic music with, one would be a kick. The other one wouldn't be a snare. It would be a cymbal. So in this video, we're going to dive into hi-hats, rides, crashes, and we're going to take a look at what makes them tick, or rather, ping. Speaking in broad, broad generalizations, cymbal sounds kind of have two elements to them. You have the fizzy, inharmonic noise, and then you kind of have the metallic ping or ting. And you can hear this uh, in acoustic cymbals, even on a single cymbal. So if we take a ride cymbal, for example, and we play uh, across the bell, what we get is primarily that uh, pingy, metallic, uh, atonal but harmonic sound. As we play further out onto the cymbal, we start to introduce more of that fizzy, noisy, uh, inharmonic content. And it's these two elements that we'll look at in terms of the synthesis of a cymbal sound. Uh, the noise and the metallic ping, and how the balance between those two elements can sort of give you the character of different cymbals. So as in the previous video, I'm gonna be using the Volca drum as my drum synth, and I'll be making use of my free online patch editor, Synthmata, just uh, because it makes it easier to see all of the parameters on the screen all at once. There's nothing that I'm doing here that can't be done on the unit itself. And of course, a lot of the concepts that we'll be talking about today will transfer to other synths as well. Uh, so I've got an initialized patch going, so let's just hear that. Okay, so obviously that doesn't sound like a symbol at all. Um, so let's start by just bringing the level down on both of the layers there. Um, let's start by talking about the, the noise. And the first thing that I, I, I'll say is that sometimes in the context of the right kind of drum sound, noise might be all that you need and actually simple can be best. And just simply having a noise source and a relatively short, uh, uh, sorry, an instant attack envelope and then a fairly short release, that can kind of just do the trick. So uh, let's bring up some noise, shorten that envelope, and that's a very fine sound. And especially if you can move that release around to give yourself a bit of a groove, that is a, a very fine sound to start out with. So um, where you can change the character of the, the noise really ultimately is when you start to filter it. And on the Volker drum we have these three different uh, filter modes. Um, the first one that I've got selected here is a high pass. So if I move up the pitch control as it is, we type to start to take away low end. And it's slightly resonant as well, so you start to pick out some of those harmonics. Get those really sort of pingy sit in the back kind of sounds. It's kind of quite a cool electro sort of crash sound when we have that longer as well. Uh, the low pass is quite cool for getting those sort of lo-fi sounds. Obviously, as you take off the high end this time, you start to get that. Well, filtered sound. Um, it gives you this quite cool sort of lo-fi sound. And then we have a band pass here as well, which one of the downsides of the, the, the low pass, I should say, is that we're not taking out any of the bottom end. So you can start to cloud the, the low end even with just noise. The band pass doesn't have that problem because of course we're uh, cutting a chunk out of the sound instead. The one thing I would say is if we turn it down, starts to sound kind of snary and that doesn't really do 
what we want. Uh, I'm going to move back to, uh, let's go to the low pass just for a second. So one way that we can, uh, with a just a simple noise source, uh, get some more attack to the sound is by modulating the uh, filter cutoff. So by applying a filter envelope, essentially. So in the mod type here, as far as our uh, Volcatron goes, if we have the envelope mode here, and we start to give a bit of mod amount and up the mod rate. Now, for more conventional envelopes, when I say I'm turning up the mod rate, what I'm actually doing on a conventional envelope is making the decay or release shorter. Uh, something I should have said in the previous video, but didn't. Uh, so if I start to move that filter a little bit, make it nice and fast, getting a bit more attack there. So if I move that down, without the attack, with the attack, it can be quite aggressive. And there's a, as with our kick drum sounds, there's the balance between the mod rate and the mod amount to get the right kind of attack. If I move the rate too low, you kind of start to hear the filter move, sweep back down, and it starts to sound unnatural. Uh, so same deal with the band pass. If we want to get a bit more attack, we can do it the same way there. When we get to the high pass, what we'll find is that to get more attack, the way to do it is to have our high pass sweep the opposite direction. So we want it to let more bass in and then quickly go back to being quite tinny. So we sweep the mod amount the other way. That gives us a much more natural sound. I quite like that as a way of getting attack with our sounds as well. So one other thing, if we're not looking for the uh, attack that we could do with our uh, mod section here, is we could set the mod type to LFO and just have the filter gently sort of moving in and out and we start to get just a bit of movement to our sound. And then uh, combining that sort of gentle movement with the LFO with say automating the envelope generators release a bit fast that can make for quite a cool thing so it's worth pointing out that the other way that we can create noise using the Volker drum and, and, and this stands for uh, any synth with a similar sort of layout is that we do also have a random mod type here. Uh, so if we go to one of our tonal oscillators instead and we just smash it with a bunch of random random LFO there, we do start to get an alternate sort of feel. It's a little bit different to our sort of standard noise, which may or may not be useful. I think this is probably about more useful for um, snare sounds, honestly, but I did just want to mention it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, the metal side of things. So I'll use this other layer here. So one way that we can get kind of a, a, a metallic sound is just to take a tonal oscillator and tune it up pretty high. Now, with just this uh, sine wave oscillator here, this is less metal and more glass to my ears. 
But here's something that's really neat with the uh, Volker drum at the very least. If we switch over to the sawtooth, which sounds kind of artificial at this stage, if we push the pitch really high up, it starts to alias, get digital aliasing, and it starts to sound really cool in terms of getting a metallic sound, right? And one trick that we can use once we know that fact is that we can actually double up our two layers and have them tuned differently and therefore have more of that atonality uh, to get a more complex metal sound. So let's get this back to being something uh, less insane. Uh, okay. And we're probably more in the realms of uh, cowbell and uh, triangle sounds, but that's a useful part of defining our symbol. Now, what's really interesting when you are working with the sort of two uh, differently tuned uh, oscillators giving us this metal sound is that the relative release of the two oscillators will kind of inform the, the, the flavor of the metal that we're hearing. So if we make one of these much shorter than the other. That's a cool sound. If we flip the sort of lengths of these releases, we get a different kind of flavor. Uh, so if we just go back to just one of them for a second, uh, if we want to get more attack out of this sound, if we feel like we need it, we can, like we did with the uh, with the noise source, we can apply some modulation to it. So here we're going to apply some pitch modulation to it. Um, again, make it fast. So you don't hear the movement, it's just that, that attack. So that's with, that's without. Again, it can be quite aggressive. So, um, just in terms of the Volker drum in this case, we have this additional processing section over here. And one thing that can be pretty cool uh, with this sort of metallic sound is applying some of the fold controls. So this is a wave folding. Gets a bit more uh, clunky, should be quite cool. Almost like we're getting some additional low harmonics happening there. It's a good cowbell sound if we were shot in actually. So uh, another way we can get metallic sounds rather than just having something that is uh, tuned high um, is by applying FM. So let's uh, get our mod back down to nothing at all. Uh, go back to our sine wave for a second here. So we're going to move our mod type to being the LFO, but we're going to crank the rate so that it is... Um, running very, very fast, which is going to be audio rate. And as we start to bring up the mod amount, we'll start to introduce other metallic in harmonic sounds. Oh, let's move that fold down. You can hear it works really well here. That's it. It's 
almost a requirement, I think. Uh, and certainly when it comes to different waveforms, um, you'll probably find that waveforms which are already more uh, harmonically complex, like a uh, sawtooth is, you'll probably want to apply less FM, otherwise it'll start to sound very sort of digital and weird. Which might be what you're after. I won't discount that idea. So uh, I think I'm going to go back to my non-FM sound and where I was just getting some of the stuff happening with the aliasing. And let's move back over here and let's blend in some noise. So. And then we're really talking about how we blend these two elements together. Let's go for the FM actually. noise, just the metal, and then blend it together. And then how we blend the levels and their relative decays is how we're going to find different flavors of symbols. One other thing that we can do uh, just uh, before we finish on the uh, Volker drum, uh, if we use the waveguide and send some stuff to the waveguide section, if we have the tune set to either Eight or sixteen, I think it is. Start to get triplet grooves. Which is really cool. Okay, well, I hope that was interesting and informative. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave it a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming synthesis videos. I've uh, got some interesting stuff coming, got uh, some new gear to show off, which I'm excited to do, which will be coming soon. Uh, we'll be looking at some more vocal drum stuff. We'll be digging into some of this new gear. Um, and of course, if there's other things you want to see, make sure you let me know in the comments if there's uh, bits of equipment that I haven't shown off for a while or if there's subjects that I haven't touched on that you'd like me to uh, take a look at then uh, I'm open to ideas just let me know in the comments as always thanks so much for joining me see you next time take care